Hey, we're here with the CEO of Stardock, uh, and we're going to get a little bit of information about Impulse with him. So go ahead and introduce yourself. My name is Brad Wardell. I'm the president and CEO of Stardock. And so what, what is it that, when was Stardock founded, and uh, where has it come from basically the beginning up until now? Well, I originally founded it back in 1991 when I was in college, you know, until I could get a real job. And uh, I started out as an OS2 software developer from 1991 up until around 2000. And the OS2 market, we don't, no one uses OS2 anymore, so we switched over to Windows in 2000 or so, and I've uh, been building up since. Awesome. So tell us a little bit about Impulse. How, what, what made you get into uh, designing it as well as where has that come from the beginning up until now? Well, when we switched over to the Windows market back in around 2000, we wanted to make it so that users could get our software a lot more quickly. It was hard to get into retail at the time, especially a company our size. So we created a digital distribution system that, that we called at the time Stardock Central that let people purchase and download our stuff. Now, over the past few years, we've had more and more people coming to us and saying, well, can we sell our stuff on your system? So this past year, we introduced a whole new platform called Impulse, which is our next generation digital distribution platform for not just selling games, buying and selling games, but all kinds of Windows software on it, as well as adding features like achievements and multiplayer matchmaking, community features, and things like that. So what, as far as mod content, user-generated content goes, uh, do you see a future with user-generated content on Impulse? Oh, absolutely. We, we support it already on our own games. So the idea is that in the future, if people, I mean, we, we support third-party uh, modding sites because that's where it's really the strong point. But people who want to submit their content and have it be part of the game, you know, more seamlessly, can do it through Impulse. And as far as user-generated generated content goes, what's your biggest fear as far as uh, moving into that market fully uh, with game publishers and user generated content developers in mind? Well, I mean, I like mods. I mean, our whole business model is around modding. I, a lot of people don't know this, but our biggest part of our business is on the enterprise side, making desktop customization software in which people can download or make new skins and that sort of thing for our software. So we like mod. We like mods. So. We like it when people take our games and do really cool things with them, and we support them with uh, providing libraries and easy ways of getting to it. Great, and so where, where do you think the future of modding is going? Oh, well, what I think is going to happen is you're going to see it more and more integrated. I think what you've seen in Spore, for example, where modding is so native to the experience that you don't even think of it as modding practically. So I think you're going to see more and more developers make use of that. What's the key part? for there to be a relationship between game developers and the independent de developers out there creating the mods, what's the key ingredient there to spark it and make it so that it keeps going? Well, documentation, developers need to make sure that the tools are really easy to use, and not easy, but I mean that they work well, and there has to be documentation so that they know what they're doing and they're not wasting their time. The other key thing, that, which isn't talked about as much, is you got to make it so that people who spend their time on mods, I mean, if you want a good mod, it's going to take time. There has to be a way for those modders to get their stuff out there and to hear about it. Do you, it, what, what systems out there today exist for modders to get their, get their services out there, get their mods, add-ons, all of their map packs and whatnot distributed? Well, it depends on the game. And since it was Solar Empire, the site actually has a library for mods part of the site. Similarly, on our game, Galactic Civilizations, users can actually submit their mods to an integrated gallery where they can download new ships, new maps, and you know, new scripts and all that kind of thing to completely... There's total conversion mods for Galactic Civilizations that you can download from the site in a nice, friendly environment, you know, downloading gallery, as if, as if, just like as if they were downloading you know, uh, skins and themes.